We picked up the, the mantle out in uh, Novi to recreate the Michigan State Fair, not to compete with the Upper Peninsula State Fair, but it's getting almost as good. And we, uh, we brought in all the animals, we brought in all the uh, uh, students that uh, compete with each other for different prizes. And a lot of these students are in the gallery today, and we're going to be bringing them on the floor after session for pictures. But they've all received small scholarships to help with their college educations. And as I was reminded yesterday by one of my staff members, she was saying that when she won a scholarship, that one scholarship helped to pay for a class that she didn't have to take out loans for. So that's how important it is for all these young people. They represent urban, suburban, and rural areas. They come from every corner of the state. And if I get them to stand up for one second, I'd like my colleagues to see who you are. I'd like to have a couple of people just address you for a minute. I have Elsie Scanlon and uh, Kent Ro Roberts. Elsie's the uh, helped put the Michigan State Fair together. He also worked on the old State Fair down Detroit with his wife. And uh, uh, Kent Roberts is in charge of the uh, of the, uh, the scholarships. So Kent, you want to go first? Sure. Good morning, everyone. I, you know, we'd start talking about small scholarships, but in our short five years, we've been able to give right around $200,000 worth of scholarships to urban and rural kids. And we've had some great support from many different people. Some of our supporters are in the uh, uh, balcony today. And we would really like to thank all the help that we've had in giving these, these rural and urban kids uh, a little bit of help in, in their uh, future. Um, I also would like to say that when we began this new adventure of trying to carry on the tradition, uh, many of us would have really loved to stay at Eight Mile and Woodward, but it wasn't a possibility. So we came up and, and we decided to do, try to do something new and even make it better and stronger and build new traditions. And one of the traditions we absolutely guaranteed a principal was on was, build, uh, was bridging that urban-rural divide. And for many of you that may not know, there is many agricultural initiatives taking place in many of our urban communities. And we are trying to do that, and we're using the fair as a template to do, do just that. So anyway, thank you for your support. Thank you for trying to understand our growth and our development as we move forward. And on behalf of, of getting close to a couple hundred kids now, uh, that $200,000 has gone a long way. So, thank you. Thank you and good morning. First of all, in 2009, when the governor closed the Michigan State Fair, some of us that had lived and died and breathed the State Fair for our entire life were totally crushed. And it took a couple years to find a way to replace that. On a glorious day, uh, a couple of us met Blair Bowman, uh, who welcomed the State Fair, the renewed State Fair, to his suburban collection showplace. What a great day that was. Who knew that in five years' time how it could grow to where it's been? He's joined today with his wife, Kimberly, our executive director, Steve Masters, my wife, Jackie, that tries to keep me straight. Uh, but what a glorious thing it's been because, first of all, we know that agriculture is a great mark in this state, a $100 billion industry, and it deserves a state fair for itself to showcase and to educate people about the greatness of agriculture. And that is what has happened at uh, Grand River at the show place. And uh, these youth, certainly, we talk about education, but we all truly know that not all education takes place in a, sh in a small a classroom, that rural life is out there, and we need to give these kids an opportunity to explore that and to compete. And that, too, has happened at the State Fair. 
what a glorious thing in five years that we now have over 150,000 come into the fair every year to hear about agriculture, to witness these young people competing, and it's just been a glorious uh, thing. And you truly need to know that in one way it is not a state fair. It's not a state fair because we haven't taken one penny of taxpayer money to put on the state fair. It's been a private entity one, really, the only one in the country that's taken on a project like this, handled as a private entity. What a story it has been that we haven't been here with our hand out. We've been here to salute and to market agriculture in this state and to market our youth. We thank you for our support to come here because what a joy it is to bring these kids here and show them the wonders of our state legislature and to know that uh, we, you have your support uh, even if it doesn't have to be monetarily. And so we just really appreciate, we appreciate Mike Kowa having us here, Representative Kathy Crawford. They have been supportive beyond belief, and we just thank you folks and uh, stick uh, with us. We're expanding. we got a 175,000-foot expansion on the show place that we're going to even fill with more uh, things to do with agriculture and to entertain and teach our uh, community that uh, so desperately needs to know where their food and fiber comes from. We just thank you, one and all. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm going to reemphasize there was no state monies put into this at all. It's all being done with private dollars, and I know a lot of my colleagues would appreciate that. So thank you very much. They're excited. They won a prize. They won a little bit of money to go towards their schooling. So it gives them that little extra incentive, that little extra push to, to, to excel. And I, I just think a lot of these kids are going to do really well in life because they're getting that, that basic understanding. And what they're getting out of it too is that they're talking to all the, these other kids that come from whole, all over the state. It's not just your little two or three square block area in Detroit or your small farming community. All of a sudden you realize that the world in Michigan is a really big place. The scholarships for sure are one of the best parts of what is for sure the best thing that we do as far as events now with the revival of the Michigan State Fair. So we decided to try to revive uh, the, the fair with some of the old traditions but also create some new ones and immediately uh, scholarships came to mind. So we have both urban and suburban though, bridging that gap between rural and urban um, youth was a big, big uh, part of the project. So now we have a full-blown 4-H club and within that our scholarship winners from the even urban communities join in with that. I learned about everything urban farming has to offer, so about compost, how to harvest, how to grow, just why it's important. I literally learned everything about urban farming, why it's important, and how it's important for the community, why it's healthy. Well, the first thing I had were backyard chickens, so um, I just always went out and I got the eggs, and then, you know, we made breakfast, and I went to school and no other kids got eggs from their backyard, so that was the first step, and then we moved on to raising chickens um, for dinner, <laughs> so then um, that grew my passion for show poultry also.